All right, so today's lesson is going to be about operator overloading. In the same way that you can overload functions to have multiple meanings based on their input context, you can change the definition of operators to behave differently given their input context. So operators, if you remember, if I have two integers, a and b, and a equals 5 and b equals 10, I can say a equals a plus b, where plus is an operator, the addition operator, and equals is an operator, the, uh, that's the copy operator, the assignment operator. So what I can do is I can create operators, custom operators, for classes or data types which don't have their own operators. So for the data type, or data structure vector. Delete this. So if I were to create two vectors of ints a and b, I can't, and a third one, c, I can't say c equals a plus b. Because there is no addition operator for vectors. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our own definition of addition for vectors. Now, this is how to create operators for classes and data types that already exist. We're also going to go over creating custom operators for classes and data types which you create. So you'll note I've got the ball.cpp and ball.h files ready and waiting to go. But we'll get to that in a moment. Let's create our operand, which is going to add two vectors. So it's going to return a vector, obviously. And then to define an operator, you say operator. And then the type of operator, so addition. Then I'm going to pass to it two vectors. Now I'm going to pass to vectors, I'm going to pass to the function these vectors in a very s specific way first way is I'm going to pass it as a constant so that the function knows that I'm not going to be allowed to make changes to the input arguments within the function itself so it maintains the values that they have like the addition operator should I, if I add two numbers it shouldn't change the values of the two input numbers it should only give me a third output number which this function does so I define it as a constant then I'm going to define the input as a pointer so that I don't have to copy the entire contents of the vector into this. I can only pa I just have to pass it by reference. So this is going to be the left hand side. This is going to be the left hand operand. And then I'm going to create another one constant vector int and right hand side, which is going to correspond to the right hand operand. And then in here, you put the code for how the operator behaves. So if you add two vectors, uh, if, uh, first thing we're going to do is create the return vector. So this is just creating a value which we're going to return. If the left-hand side size and does not equal the right-hand side size, it's not going to do any math because you can't add two vectors of different sizes. This is just basic uh, matrix addition I'm doing here. So and then I'm going to create a for loop for int i equals 0. i is less than LHC, LHS dot size. i plus plus. It doesn't matter which one I use, left hand side or right hand side, because they're both the same size. Then I'm going to say ret dot push back. I'm going to add a value to the return vector, which is going to be LHS dot at i plus rhs dot at i. And then I'm going to return ret. So if I compile this, you can see now that, that now that error goes away. And if I create a for loop to go through the values of C, then give vectors A and B some values.
And there we go. So now if I run this, see the output here is in fact the addition of the two vectors. So the first value is the sum of the first value of the two vectors, so that's 1 plus 5. The second is 2 plus 6, then 3 plus 7, and finally 4 plus 8. So that is how you create your own custom operator for different data types. And you can do these for any data types which don't already exist. Uh, C++ compiler seems to complain if you try and do this for operators that already do exist. Like it complained when I tried to change the definition of the addition operator for integers to subtraction. To be funny. Didn't work. Kind of sad. But you, this allows you to create your own operators for any situation. So if you need to create a vector addition operator to add vectors like matrices, you can do that. You can do the same thing for addition. Or you can even do Boolean operators. So you can do this to check to see if two of the input uh, vectors are equivalent. So if I change this code, well, not change the whole, well, I have to make sure that they're equal, else return false, they're not equal, return true if it gets all the way to the end, if LHS dot at I does not equal RHS dot at I return false get rid of this don't need it run this again so now it's going to check to see if C out vectors A and B are equal Which is now going to check A equal B and L. Get rid of this because that's no longer valid. Run it. There, no match. Oh, uh, A equal B. True. Got to use parentheses. There we are. Try that. There we are. Okay. Um, to explain what I just did there, this little thing down here is a condensed if statement. Uh, the way it works is ooh. the way it works is I input my boolean statement. So I'm checking if a is equal to b which I have defined here using the boolean operator. Then I put a question mark, and then I put the true statement, then a colon, and then the false statement. So if this is true, it does whatever is here, and if it's false, it does whatever is here. So if I delete this and copy this, and then change it so that this is now B, and then run it again, it should be uh, vectors a and b are equal true so that's how you can create your own custom operators for different data types there is a list of operators which you can apply this to which I will put in the course links so this is doing it for external or this is doing it for already existing data types and structures Let's take a look at doing it for classes that you create yourself, because it is just a tiny bit different. All right, so to look at adding your own operators to classes you've written, I've gone ahead and made up some code using the ball.cpp and ball.h files. Now, when doing this with a class you create, you have some advantages. The ad biggest one being you have one of the operands already. You don't have to get it as a function. or I mean, You don't have to get it as a function argument. So I create the operator here. You'll note that it's returning not a, 
not a ball class or a ball object in its entirety. It's only returning it by reference. And I'm only passing it the right-hand side argument of the operand, because I already know what the left-hand side of the operand is. It is this ball object. It's the object that is calling the operator. So basically, when you create an operator for a class that you already have, it's essentially treating it, or it works, because this side, the left-hand side, is calling the addition operator. And it's using this as the argument. So the code for this is, so I create, I say ball at, so this is the return value. And then I have to say that it is part of the ball class. So, and then the semi, double semicolon, or the double colon. And then I define it just like in the normal operator, just like I did for the vectors. So operator plus, constant ball, but again, this time only the right hand side. I create a return value, and then I do the math for the operator. So I say that uh, when I add two ball objects together, I'm adding their velocities. So I'm add so the return values velocity x is the, this ball's vel x, so the object that's calling the operator, plus the arguments vel x. And then it's exactly the same for the vel y, this vel y plus rhs dot vel y. If you don't remember the this operator, I suggest you go back and watch the C++ classes video. And then I return the new object I created. So when I run this, uh, I went ahead and said that I created two balls, ball A and ball B. I set ball A's velocity x and y to be 10 and 10 and ball B is velocity x and y to be 5 and 0. Then I add the two values and store it back to ball A. So when I run this, you can see that balls A velocity x is now 15, 10 plus 5, and its y velocity is now 10 plus 0, or just 10. So that's creating operators for objects, uh, classes and objects and data types that already exist and adding them to your own custom classes and objects. So doing this or creating your own operators is a really cool thing and it's probably one of my favorite things that C++ added uh, over C. Well, that and function overloading because it does let you create a lot of very powerful code and it does allow you to mess around a tiny bit with the underlying stuff of the compiler. This effectively lets you influence how operations are done. So that is it for this video. And I think that this is actually the last video in this little C++ epilogue. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour into C++. This is by no means a full tour. There's a lot more to C++. And again, this only gives you an introduction into it. This doesn't make you an, an automatic expert programmer. You have to go out and try some of these examples, try some of the code, mess around with it. Like I say, break it, fix it, Google, try and find solutions, and program more and more every day. And that will make you the programmer you hopefully set out to be by watching these videos. So again, I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, I've been Human Hardware. Thanks for watching.